So this is a Westie, and we are going to do just a traditional pet trim on him. He is um, a little nervous, a little scared because of all the commotion, which is, is totally natural. Um, what I started with was a number four, which is this purple comb. And what I did was I did what we call the flat work. So I came in, in here in the shoulder, underneath his neck, and then in this shoulder. And by doing a shorter blade around this area, it gives them a little more neck and they don't look so short and droopy. So I always like to do the shoulder area and underneath the neck in something shorter. And I never cut this particular breed with a seven blade or a five blade. I feel like um, if they're not hand stripped, which this breed should be hand stripped, they, um, they're so soft that they leave too many clipper marks and you can actually see them in the coat. So using a comb attachment really blends it well, and you can do as short as a five or a seven um, by using a, a comb attachment. So that's what I, I prefer to do on this particular breed. And then I changed my attachment to a number two. And I just blended this line here where I did it a little shorter, and I brush up. So once I, I cut that part, I'll brush up a little bit. And this is gonna take a lot more hair off. And I'll even stretch, stretch the skin. And we wanna elongate that neck and give that dog a nice looking neck. And by doing this as a normal pet trim, your client really doesn't know what you did different, but it just looks so much better. And so we're just blending this right down into this underline here. And right at the elbow is where that underline should go. We're gonna come straight down. And again, this is just a pet trim. So I'm gonna back brush this. Even doing a pet trim, we can still add more style to the cut and make that dog look better. Obviously, if you have a pet that comes into your salon and they just want it short all over, then you're gonna do that but you can give every dog a little more style. So again, stretching that skin. I'm gonna come straight back. And you wanna overlap when you're clipping to make sure that you have a nice, even clip. And I'll go over it again. And then what I'm doing is I'm starting to angle this down. And I'm blending off into that skirt. And I'm gonna come down in this area. Westies too should have nice angulation in the rear. I, I see a lot of Westies that have so much hair furnishings, they look like American Cockers. They really shouldn't have that much hair. People will leave, you know, the line up here, they just shave this and then there's a line. It's like a hula, a hula skirt, you can, you can see that line. So by using different blades, you can learn how to blend those lines and make it look nicer. And if you look, his tail set is a little low. You're okay, it's okay, Tyler. So lifting up his tail, you can see his tail set is low. We want ultimately a level top line. So we could have left more hair here to fill in to make it look like he has a level top line. Once he relaxes a little bit, his tail's kind of starting to go up a little bit. Now it looks better. But he's just a little tense and a little nervous. So now that his tail's up, it doesn't look like we need to fill too much in there. Now I'm gonna come off the hip. Good boy. And when I, I like to go whatever blade that I'm doing on the body, I do on the sides of the tail and underneath the tail. So I'll come straight up the back of the tail. Good boy. We can come down here. And we're gonna leave a little feathering here at the chest. Turn around, good boy. 
And we're just going to do the same thing on this side. Make sure we have it nice and even. Again, I'm doing slow strokes. I'm letting my blade and my clipper do the work for me. We're going to blend this off the butt and the hip area. And I'll even come down and come right underneath here. So all this is really nice and short here. And most of our clients, that's the area where they want us to keep it nice and short. I'm just coming and blending this right into the hip here. And that's all I would do with the body for now. And our, our, our detachable um, combs, <clears throat> what's ni nice about our combs is you can use a 10 underneath or a 40. And I'm using, or I'm sorry, a 30. I'm using a 30. And what you want to do is this is a 10 setting. You want to flip this switch over and now it's going to be on the 30. So you can use a 10 or a 30. And sometimes if a client comes in and says, I just want it a little bit longer, Instead of putting the 30, I'll use a 10. And it just leaves it a little bit longer and I'm not having to use, say, a longer comb attachment. So because this is just a pet trim, I'm gonna skim down these legs and take off some of this hair where it really, we really don't need it. You're okay. Good boy. This is, this is an E. And I'm gonna actually come in back here and just very lightly skim some of this hair off. Same thing on this side. And what I like to do is take the front leg and just skim this right down the front leg and the sides. And I'll hold this up and they should have this right here left. So I'll come and I'll just skim this off. Good boy. I'm just gonna skim that right down. So you can see, it, I really didn't take a lot off, but it, now it's starting to define the leg. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. You're okay, Tyler. Good boy. Good boy. And I'll do that on this back end really quick as well. And I'm just skimming this down the leg. Okay, now we have a pattern set. And also another tip is when you're working, always do what you can do with the clipper that you have in your hand. So I did all my prep work with this clipper. I did all the sanitary, I did tip the ears. And when we tip the ears on a Westie, I do a third of the ear length. And generally, when their hair is standing up, their ears, when they're pricked, should be the same length as the top of the head, okay? And a lot of our pet Westies come in, this is just super flat, and we can't get that to stand up. If you just kind of come and pluck some of those hairs out, you can see I'm not pulling a lot, but that's gonna generate some new growth, and it's gonna make that head pop up. So I'll just do that a little bit, even on the cheeks, just pull. You want to pull the direction you want it to grow back. So if you want the hair to grow straight up, just pull it straight up. So I like to do that on some of the Westies that come in and their head's just flat. The only way that a true Westie looks like they have a red head, a round head, is with tons of hairspray and chalk. And we can't do that to our pet dogs. So doing that will kind of start to grow some coarser texture and it'll help it stick up a little bit. So um, using my clipper for my prep work is 
once I'm done with this clipper, I should never have to pick it up again. And that saves us time turning around, leaving our dog, switching blades, all that time adds up. And so if you try and use and get in the habit of using the one clipper that you have in your hand, that will save you time. And also what's really great about um, these Westies is not, once they're clipped, you know, their hair gets so soft. So we have a deshedding tool. This is our fine deshedding tool. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and just take this on this coat and it's going to remove all of the dead undercoat. And it will actually start to promote some coarse growth. It's not gonna be as coarse as if this dog was hand stripped, but you can see I just took out a lot of that dead and you can see now there's some shiny coat here. So I'll do this, take the hair off first, um, and then I'll do this. And I'm just running it right down where I clipped. And you, this would be, you know, used as carding the coat. You could certainly take, you know, a carding knife and go through it. Um, but if it's a pet trim and they get clipped, this is just this is just a, a good quick technique. Actually, if you have some clipper marks in here and you take this, that's going to blend in those clipper marks. A stripping knife would do the same thing. Basically, what we're trying to achieve is taking out that dead undercoat. And again, just the soft dead stuff. Hey Tyler, good boy. And you can feel it pulling when you when there's undercoat. You can feel it grabbing that undercoat. And I'll just do this for five minutes real quick. This is not gonna damage. You could certainly even use this on a hand strip dog. It's not going to damage or cut the top coat. Um, it's just going to remove that dead undercoat. So I like to do that a little bit with that tool. And I use that tool. That's our fine. This is our wide. I like, and it, they come in, this is our professional line, and this is just our um, basic line. It's the same tool. It's just a different shape handle. So if you're looking to buy one and you, see, you only see the green, it's, it's the same tool.